Welcome to the Rochester, New Hampshire History Podcast, a monthly show that will shine a light on a piece of history that has been all but forgotten. In the 1890s, the United States was in the middle of a bicycle craze. Though the bicycle had been around since the early 1800s, recent changes in material and design made the 1890s bicycle a smoother and safer ride than previously built bikes. By 1896, there were more than 150 bicycle factories in the United States, producing over 1,000 different makes of bikes. Historians often call this period the Golden Age of Biking. At the end of the 19th century, cycling had become an essential means of transportation, as well as a popular form of recreation. During this time, the most famous bicyclist in New Hampshire was E.H. Corson of East Rochester, New Hampshire. Corson was born in East Rochester in 1849. He learned to ride a bicycle in 1882, and his bike of choice was the Star Bike. The Star Bike does not look like the bikes of today. It has a small front tire, around 19 inches in diameter, and a large rear tire, around 50 inches in diameter. It looks like a difficult bike to ride. One of Corson's most famous accomplishments was in July of 1883, when he was the first person to ride a bicycle down the carriage road in Mount Washington. The carriage road was completed in 1861, was about 16 feet wide, and about 7.5 miles long. The road had to drop at 4,000 feet and 99 curves. He did this in the age when you did not wear bike helmets or any other safety equipment. You have to be very fearless to attempt this on a bike with a simple handbrake attached to the wheel. According to Corson, he used the brake so frequently, he wrote, I length my hand and arm so it is hard for me to write. The newspaper article about his feet was quite detailed. It stated that he went up the mountain on Monday morning from Gorham and completed the journey of 11 miles to the summit of Mount Washington pushing his bike in advance. After resting, he started his dangerous journey while the guests at the summit house held their breath in fear for his safety as he wheeled rapidly around the steep bend just below the house. Witnesses said that his brakes were in constant use. At the end of the ride, Corson's hands were so sore from the constant use of his brake. Corson's ride down the mountain took one hour and 50 minutes. Afterwards, Corson wrote the Rochester Courier in response to his article that he stopped a few times to enjoy the scenery, and he probably only was on his bike for an hour. If he attempted to ride down Mount Washington again, he would not stop and have a much better time. Corson was also a salesman and sold star bikes in New Hampshire and Maine. Starting from Rochester, he would take long bike tours throughout the state. He passed through towns. He would preach the qualities of his star bike, and he found plenty of people eager to buy his bikes. On one of his trips, he bicycled all the way to Gorham, New Hampshire. He claimed he sold more bikes than any other individual in New Hampshire. He published the most famous book on the star bike in 1884. It was called the Star Rider's Manual, and the book provided a short history of the bike and included important information such as how to get off and on the bike. That may sound silly, but the Star Bike was a tall bike, and getting on and off was not an easy thing to do. In addition to help promote and sell bikes, he also published a magazine titled The Star Advocate. He also can add inventor to his resume. He invented several improvements for bikes, which included the Corson Star Saddle, which was a suspension-based bicycle seat, and the Corson's Taurus Delight, which was a filtered drinking tube made of rubber, which was used to siphon water from brooks and springs. Corson helped form the Rochester Cycle Club, which was quite popular in the late 1800s. One of the club's favorite rides was between Rochester and Farmington on a three-foot-wide bicycle path. They held meetings in downtown Rochester and held fundraisers at the Hayes Opera House. In the 1890s, Corson operated a bicycle factory in Nashua under the name E.H. Corson, and then changed the name to Corson Cycling Manufacturing Company. The high-wheel bikes, like the Star Bikes, lost popularity when many riders injured themselves by falling off the high mount. His factory produced bikes that look similar to the bikes we see today. He also operated a small bicycle factory in East Rochester, which also repaired bikes. By the early 1900s, his fascination with bikes waned, and he turned his attention to motorcycles, which were just starting to come into their own. I suspect he wanted to go faster, and motorcycles permitted him to do that. In 1904, he operated the Indian Motorcycle Company in Boston, Massachusetts. A few years later, he was selling Thor motorcycles in Boston. And just like with bicycles, he sold them, how people how to use them, and how to maintain them. He would go on long road trips with his motorcycle, promoting and selling motorcycles. E. H. Corson passed away at the age of 84. His obituary stated that he was a native of Rochester, New Hampshire, 
pioneer in bicycling manufacturing and the owner of the first motorcycle agency in Boston. What became the bicycle craze that swept New Hampshire and the rest of the country? Cycling dropped off dramatically in the United States between 1900 and 1915. Automobiles became the preferred means of transportation. And in 1920, bicycles became considered children's toys. And by 1940s, most bicycles in the United States were made for children. And this ends the podcast. For any questions or comments, please email blogpiffinpodcast at gmail.com and come back next month for another episode of Rochester, New Hampshire History. 